I am Brother Matthew from New York. I attend the church at Brooklyn. I would like to share to you from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, a few thoughts which relates to the fruit bearing conditions. In John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 16, Jesus spoke very clearly, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I have appointed you that you may go and bear fruit, and the fruit will last. We as believers have a fundamental obligation to bear fruit. In order to bear fruit, we remain in Jesus. Jesus spoke, remain in me. He says, I am the wine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. In Philip's translation, he goes another level. Instead of remaining, Philip translates as grow in him. Not just passively remaining, but growing in him is a very important nature for bearing fruit. I would like to give you a few points how we can bear fruit. Firstly, in order to bear fruit, you should be in contact, in fellowship, in intimacy with the living water. The living water is compared to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity of God. Holy Spirit is so operative in the present age for us to see His presence in our life. We have to feel the communion of the Holy Spirit in our life on a day-to-day -day basis. In Psalms chapter 1, verse 3, He is like a river of living waters which yields its fruit in due season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. The tree that is planted by the rivers receives the water, nutrition, shade, uh, everything. And that tree knows how much it is benefited by being near to that waters. So also, people of God, Let's depend on the Holy Spirit. Let the river of Holy Spirit flow by your side. That you will feel the fellowship. You will feel the communion. You will feel the proximity of the Holy Spirit. In Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 12, Every month they will bear because the water of the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food 
and the leaves for healing. Praise God. Secondly, spiritual receptivity. Spiritual receptivity is receiving the word of God in a spiritual manner. Jesus said in several occasions, those who have ears, let him hear. Let's pray that our eyes, our ears, our heart, everything is spiritually enabled, spiritually tuned, that we can access the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 23, we read, the one who received the seed that fell on the good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. We need to activate on the word of God. The one who produced the crop in the parable was an open-minded individual who was willing to learn. Only those who are willing to learn can understand a concept. Once you understand, they are willing to translate or actualize into their life or put into action. Such are the people who produce the good fruit on the good seed. Thirdly, in order to bear fruit, the old life should die, or death of the old life. In John chapter 12, 24, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Jesus was giving an amazing paradox of life and death. Life begins after death. A live seed buried in the cold ground, after a few days, the live seed slowly dies to produce a seedling. That seedling goes to be a plant and then to be a tree to bear fruit. Jesus was this kernel of wheat who died for us, who gave his life up so that his church may rise. We should be willing to die to a flesh so that we may live and others may live for Christ. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, no longer I live Christ lives in me. Fourthly, being pruned or being chastened. In John chapter 15, verse 2, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, 
so that it will be even more fruitful. This is another paradox Jesus spoke of. A branch to bear fruit should take the pruning or chastening. There are two kinds of branches, one that bears fruit and one that does not bear fruit. The branches that do not bear fruit are drastically pruned back, listen to this, so that they will not drain away the strength of the wine. An unproductive branch is a burden for the wine, and the gardener knows it very well, and he prunes it back drastically so that the branch that tries to bear fruit can bear fruit. The wine or branch cannot produce the crop of which it is capable of without severe pruning. People of God, all over the world today we see this pandemic is causing hardship, death, losses of the loved ones and Many of the believers are also facing the same problem. I just encourage you this morning not to be worried, not to be discouraged. God still loves us. In this illustration, the more the pruning, the more the yield. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. That is powerful, people. To be a son of God you have to endure discipline, endure hardship. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10. God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. So this pruning in our life has a purpose, and that purpose is to share in His holiness. Praise the Lord. Those who know their calling, they know exactly the route they are going through. Oh yes, there are ups and downs, sorrows and joys, but still they know where they are going. People of God, I would like to encourage you this morning to be strong in your heart. Have that hope in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Finally, abiding in Christ. Hallelujah. Abiding means taking residence, living in Christ. Like the branch abides in Jesus, we have to abide or remain in Christ. How is this possible? So many distractions out there. 
a lot of commotions. But yet, for a child of God, there is a hope. We have an anchor in Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, abide in Christ. He is the rock of salvation. Every day, begin your day with prayer. Prayer in the morning, even though it may be for a few moments, it will take a long way in your life. In conclusion, dear brothers and sisters, God is expecting you to bear fruit. In whatever capacity that God has kept you. He doesn't want to do overdo anything beyond what God has given. Everyone is given a gift, a spiritual gift, and we have an obligation to fan into the gifts that God has given to us. May God bless you and keep you safe. Amen.